popping smello back at you with another video today i'm going to show you how to use one shots this is a thorough detailed one shot guy not going to waste any time put a like on the video please and thank you let's go all the one shots are going to be from the omega one shot kit it's a kit that i just dropped the link will be in the description first thing we'll do is select the one shot so once you have the one shot in a browser you're going to take a look go through the sounds that you want now you can put one right here you can select it or you could put it in between however you want to do it but if you want to switch one shots really fast you know while you're going through them you can hold control click around it'll automatically change it on a sampler so now we have our one shot the first thing that i recommend doing is opening up the sampler we're going to talk about the envelope the envelope is very simple you're going to choke everything every single one except hold I recommend drag and hold all the way up. Let's play it. When you stop pressing the note or when the note stops playing, it will stop on a dime. With a lot of one shots, they mimic real instruments. So you want to play with the release because most instruments don't stop on a dime. So you could do a short release or you could do a longer release. It's up to you, play around with the release, get it to where you want. You could take a piano sound, you could move the attack back a little bit. So it'll fade in. All the one shots in my kit are tuned to C. Most of the one shots you'll get from anywhere are tuned to C. In some cases they aren't. The way that I usually find out something is off key or off pitch is by finding out that it doesn't sync with the composition I have. It's out of key when I try to note match. I'll give you an example. I have a melody here in FL keys. Of course, it's tuned to C, so all the notes are going to be what they're supposed to be. So now with a random one shot, let's pretend it's from another kid or whatever. I'm going to match the notes. Now, I might not notice it while I'm pushing the notes in, but let's see something real quick. Let's play it. Whoa, whoa. I would hope your ears can pick up. That's not in the same key. It's not in the same pitch. They don't match up the way they're supposed to. So the easiest way to fix that, this is the easiest way and this is how I do it for everything. You go into the sampler and you go to the envelope tab. There's gonna be a root note pitch selector at the bottom. Play the sound and continue to right click these notes until it matches the pitch of the note you're listening to. So we're gonna start off. Whoa, you seen that? I got it in three clicks and I was just like, it sounds like it might be lower, sounds like it might be lower. So that might be too low for me. So I'll take that same note, which is the F sharp, and I'll go over there to a different F sharp, a higher one. Now they match perfectly. Everything is perfectly in pitch. So now that we have our one shot, we go back to the sampler and we're gonna go to the time stretching mode because that's one of the most important decisions that you're gonna make. What type of time stretching mode you're gonna have it on. In most cases, you'll see people just say, go straight to stretch in every situation and everything is good. I have different beliefs when it comes to that and I'm gonna go over those. Let's talk about resample first and what resample is good for. If you're using a bass one shot, I would recommend using resample instead of stretch and i'm going to show you why so i have this bass right here let's change it to stretch you should notice that it sounds kind of funny and it sounds kind of stretched out sounds kind of grainy and stuff like that especially when you hit this top note let's stretch out the top note and just analyze that so you can get more of a sense of how messed up it sounds Sounds very nasty, very stretchy. Let's go back to resample. Let's take the time back to none and listen to it now. See, none of that exists. It flows very smoothly. It sounds like a good sample. Another thing resampling is good for, in my opinion, is when you want to use the one shot with higher notes on a sound that is very short. For instance, like a guitar, a pluck. Now, unlike stretch, the higher you go, the shorter the note is going to get. But that's not really going to be an issue when you use these higher notes on sounds that are already short. Here's an example. Now, when we take that same sample and move it to stretch and we use higher notes, let's see how it sounds now. It has that stretch sound that really doesn't sound good. Now let's talk about stretching. When it comes to stretching, 
We'll talk about higher notes first. It is possible for you to use stretch mode with higher notes, but again, still sounds nasty. So this is what you would do. You would use the multiplicator knob on the time stretching. You want to move it to the left. It's going to shorten the sample. It'll give you a better sound and effect. So. Now let's compare this to the regular stretch without the multiplicator. So first with it, without it. So boom, you should hear the difference immediately. Now I made this point during the last point. Another thing is when you're using stretch mode, it's better to use deeper notes on the one shot. That's just what it is. It's gonna sound a lot more authentic, a lot more fluid. Let's listen to this real quick. You see, it doesn't have that nasty stretch effect. Let's boost it two octaves just to drive this point further home. Sounds fake as hell. I don't got to play it three, five times. You get it, use deeper notes. Now, another reason to use stretch is for chords. And there are two situations where I think this really fits. The first is note length. If you notice, if I have it in resample mode, everything's not ending in the same space because being that the sample gets shorter, the higher you take it in resample mode, each three notes are gonna end in different spaces. So to avoid that, we go to stretch mode. Everything ends on the same note. But that's one thing to be aware of. If you plan on using chords and you plan on having them drag a long time, it's good to have it in stretch mode so that all of the lengths of the notes end at the same time. And also with chords, you might have a sound that has some type of movement, some type of fluctuation, some type of animation to it. Let's play one note first. So you hear what it's doing. You hear it has a lot of different stuff going on within the sound in one note. When you have it in resample mode and you play a chord, those animations and stuff, they're not gonna be synced up. They're gonna be all over the place, which you might like that sound, but let's listen to it real quick. Let's try something else. So now we put it in stretch mode. Let's listen to all the fluctuation, all the movement, all of that stuff right now. It's all in sync. In my opinion, it's a lot better to have those synced up. So when it comes to stretch and resample, those are the situations I would recommend using them in, but you can use them however you want, however you see fit. Let's get to some saucy sauce and talk about some of the effects within the sampler. All right, so we got a melody right here. I want you to see how the notes are overlapping. We're gonna go to the miscellaneous functions tab within the sampler and discuss some of those very quickly. The first one that we're gonna discuss is portamento, which is very simple. It gives the notes a sliding effect. You could play polyphonic stuff, which means you can have more than one note hitting at one time and it's just gonna slide all over the place. So let's listen to it. Then you have the mono mode on the polyphony. It's gonna make sure that when you have overlapping notes like this, the notes just play one at a time. With the slide knob, of course, you control the timing of the slide. That's actually better on a lead. Let's listen to it on a lead. If you don't want to do the sliding through the sampler, you can do it through the piano roll. You can stretch out the first note, all these other notes. So I'm going to click this right here, the slide, and I'm going to shorten this note that I just put down and just replace all the notes that I had with this right here. You can control the timing of the slide by how long it is. So let's talk about some of these other effects. Now you got the arpeggiator, something I don't really use, but. That's something that'll really just help you with the melody. You can experiment with that. Now this tab I really like, this is the echo delay in a fat mode. Now what I recommend, instead of just playing with the knobs, I recommend using the presets and then playing with it from there.
levels, let's take it all the way to 10. So just with those, you can transform a sound completely, but let's go back to the envelope tab. We have a filter knob right here and you can control different types of filters, but most people just use low pass. This controls where the filter hits. This controls the resonance of the filter. So let's play with it real quick. So boom, you get the point on that. But let's talk about the LFO. They have panning, volume, mod X, and mod Y for the filter. So you can automate the filters with the LFO. And you also have pitch. I'm gonna go over the settings on one of these and then I'm just gonna play with all of them. Amount controls how much of the LFO wave is going. Now, this right here affects how the volume fluctuates. Now the attack controls how soft or hard it comes in. The delay pushes it back and speed makes it either slower or faster. Now, as far as these, these control the shape of the LFO. I'm gonna go through some of these. We're gonna start with the volume. So with all of that, especially those LFOs, you can definitely transform not just a whole sound, but a whole melody before you even get to the mixer. All right, so now I have this melody, but I wanna show you something that's very unique about my one shot kit that I have never seen in another one shot kit. I included playing sounds and they can give some realism to your melodies. Let's listen to this real quick, this melody that I have. Now you can hear all of that going on in the background. Let's just mute that so that you can hear it. Come on, man. That type of stuff, it, 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 nobody's doing that, fam. You can only get it here. And I'll make a one shot kit, but enough of that. So boom, you got a melody, you got the one shot and stuff like that. You wanna freak it and give some more added realism, some more dimension to the sound and stuff like that. There are a bunch of different things that you can do. Let's go over some of those with stock plugins first. The Fruity Delay 3 is one of the best things that you can use and is very slept on. It has a lot of different features like distortion. You have a sample rate bit crusher built into it that people don't really play with or nothing like that. When you pull it up, it's gonna sound like this. I recommend turning the dry knob all the way down and just working with the wet knob as far as the feedback first. I'm gonna turn the time down as far as the you know echo and stuff like that. And I'm just going to play with the time and modulation rate. You can mess with the tone. You can even put the delay back on like one four, push the tone down and just have a deeper tone delay. Turn the wet down. Now let's talk about reverb. You can use the Fruity Reverb, but I use the Fruity Convolver because it has different impacts that imitate different spaces. So we'll do something like, something like single car garage. Turn the draw all the way down, see how it sounds. It has a nice effect. You could just keep it like that or you could bring the dry back in and lower the wet a little bit. You can also go to the equalizer tab and you can cut out either the high frequencies you get the low frequencies to take out the low end. You can also use the vintage chorus So one thing you could do is use gross beat and use a halftime feature. Now that affects the whole melody, but if you turn down the time volume,
it'll help beef up a thin one shot if that's what you're using now when we get outside of stock plugins let's talk about tape emulators first i got a few lined up i'm gonna go through some of these and let you see how they affect the melody Now you see how those just change the whole texture of the sound and stuff like that. So tape emulators are very good to put some glue to the melody and give it a whole different texture. Now outside of that, you have a lot of multi effects plugins and I got four lined up right here. I'll click a few different presets on some of these just so you can get a scope. So you get the point. Now, if you mix all of that stuff in that we talked about, you could come up with something real crazy. So I hope you got a lot of value out of that. Please subscribe if you have made it this far. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about the tutorial. I will be back with more tutorials soon. And also, I'm going to be going cook up crazy. So you'll see a lot of how to's on the beats and just a lot of just cook ups and things of that nature. But other than that, I'll see you all another day. Somehow, some way I'm out.